Welcome again to another session of Discover Tinley. Uh, my name is Ron Centenni with the Human Resources Commission in town here, and our job is to kind of help out uh, publicize and uh, uh, make people aware of what's going on in the village of Tinley Park. And every month we're kind of highlighting people and uh, things going on in the, in the village that uh, have a meaning to all of us as citizens. And today we have a, a pretty important uh, person in town here that uh, really has a lot to do with the safety of Tinley Park and the people in Tinley Park, and that's our police chief, Mike O'Connell. Mike, uh, welcome to Discover Tinley. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, thanks for having me on the show today. Yeah, uh, you guys uh, do a lot. I was kind of, the biggest thing I was thinking about after 9-11, you know, people kind of had a high regard for police uh, uh, officers before that, but boy, after 9-11, uh, a heightened regard for the, the work you guys do, and I, I give my hats off to you guys, really, it's honestly, because uh, it's what, what you provide. <laughs> you, I, you couldn't pay me enough to do the job you guys do, so Thank thanks you. for all the things that you do provide for us. Thank you. Uh, we certainly enjoy serving the people of Tinley Park. We have, a, we have a great community here, and we know we have an obligation, but it comes more as uh, enjoyment serving the people in, in public safety. Mm -hmm. And after 9-11, I think, uh, as you said, I think people found out uh, that uh, our officers are, are on the ball. Mm -hmm. They know how to function and, uh, you know, came to the to the uh, aid to make people feel comfortable as far as safety and security in the community. Yeah, thank goodness you guys don't have to do that big a job, but uh, what you do have to deal with. Uh, how many people have we got in the department? Of right now we have 72 full-time officers. Wow. Uh, we have 16 telecommunicators. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a great uh, force of 24 part-time officers, and in the last couple of years we just started up a, an auxiliary force mm -hmm. uh, of 10 officers uh, who will, will help us in traffic control and crowd control during mm -hmm. our special uh, events such as Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest Parade, <clears throat> uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade, whatever it might be. And you guys do a lot with the Tweeter Center over there too? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, that's, quite a, a bit. That's, a that's a side assignment uh, okay. and an overtime assignment for the oh, officers okay. uh, that they're, you know, they're separately uh, uh, detailed over there. Mm. Uh, and uh, that certainly keeps us busy starting with this May 24th. Oh, yeah. You're going to have fun with uh, Harlem and 183rd there. Isn't it? <laughs> I think that's an understatement. Yes, uh, yes. yes we're, we're, we're being uh, challenged this year with a lot of road construction projects. Yeah, yeah. The engineers in the state of Illinois have worked with us very closely, been very cooperative. Uh, we have found that the residents have also been working with us very, very well in finding alternate routes and being considerate of others on the roadway, making sure that everybody... Uh, flows pretty smoothly. Wow. We're very happy with that. Good, good. What's it take to become a police officer in Timley Park? And what kind of professional training do you have to, to make sure we have the, the best the best people around? Well, I think you hit it uh, on the head. We do have the best people around, there's no doubt. Uh, the, the hiring process is very stringent. Once you apply for the job, what you do is you take an, uh, a written test to qualify first. Once you make the list on the written test, you will do, you'll, be, you'll undergo a, a background check, a rather extensive background check, polygraph examination, we talk to people, credit checks, uh, many other things. Uh, we do a psychological profile to see if the officer is psychologically ready to take on the, the job. And uh, once they are certified by our Civil Service Commission, then they are sent uh, to the police academy in one of about five different academies in the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm where they then undergo 480 hours of very rigid training to become certified as police officers in Illinois. Wow. Once they complete that 480 hours, we certainly welcome them back to the department where they then undergo another 480 hours of field training. Oh, wow. <coughs> uh, On over, top of the original 480, huh? Yes, sir. Wow. And that's over the course of about uh, 12 weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a very regimented, strict training schedule of field training for our officers. Uh, they're made to uh, to undergo a, a lot of testing, a lot of scrutinizing, role playing. Uh, we have some excellent field training officers who put a lot of time and effort in to bringing these these new recruits that we have on board up to the professional level that the Tinley Park has has learned to expect. Mm. And uh, we work very hard to maintain that level of professionalism, and certainly work very hard at the curriculum of field training to make sure that the, that the taxpayers get a bang for their buck. Uh, it's, been, it's an ongoing thing, too, right, for training? Uh, yes, it you're is. You're probably doing that pretty regularly with even your, some of your veterans, probably, huh? We train uh, every other Wednesday. We have uh -huh. The department is separated into two divisions, A and B division. Mm -hmm. uh, a division will train one Wednesday, and then the following uh, Wednesday, B division will train while A covers for them. Mm -hmm. So there's an ongoing, we have a 12-month ongoing training program mm -hmm. where we do a lot of in-service training, any new specialized training that's mandated by law that the officers have to know about. Mm -hmm. Uh, weapons of mass destruction, hazmat, 
firearms training that they have that we have on a monthly basis we have quarterly qualifications for the officers as far as firearms and that there's just an abundance of other training that the officers need to keep up on and uh, we have a very uh, a tremendous training budget that the village gives us mm -hmm. and uh, we use it well we use it very well have you found <coughs> since 9-11 your training has become a little different or more involved or <coughs> have you had to add on some things that we maybe didn't have to do before well we've we've been trained in hazmat and they've added a curriculum of weapons of mass destruction and concepts of, of terrorism mm -hmm. and the officers we've worked hard to get the officers into these eight hour classes mm -hmm. besides that we've had we've had to look at some special equipment for the officers which require a little bit of training mm -hmm. uh, but other than that uh, our previous <coughs> training has pretty much kept us where we where we need to be Wow. And your auxiliary officers, do they go through the same training too? or The auxiliary officers will not, but our part-time officers will. Oh, okay. Auxiliaries basically are strictly for traffic and crowd oh, control, okay. and they do an excellent job. They have worked out very well for us. Mm -hmm. But in the case of an emergency response, uh, we would not put them in harm's way because they don't have the elaborate training that we have with our full-time and part-time officers. So the part-time still <coughs> do a lot of the same training? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the part-time officers uh, have, a, have a monthly training. Uh, that they're required to attend. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to maintain the same firearm certification and use of force certification that the full-time officers do. And then if there's any specialized training that they, they need while they're working the street mm -hmm. for our street qualified part-timers, we make sure that they, they have it as well. Wow. <coughs> how many people, how many officers are on the streets that maybe at one day? Is that something you want to tell or? <laughs> sure. I'm just kind of curious. Well, how many do you have on the streets at one time? And, and also It all vehicle. depends on the traffic. Okay. Uh, we, we know our, our active points of day and night and we'll have anywhere from six to fourteen officers on the street mm -hmm. depending on the the, the day uh, the time of day or the afternoon and the day of the week okay do we have something in <coughs> Timley Park where the officers have their own cars is that still a part of the, the program uh, where they, they actually have their own vehicles that they use the take-home program is is not a rare animal but it is uh, one that is uh, has worked out very well hmm. uh, the officers do take their cars home they're allowed to use the cars within the community mm -hmm. uh, we take special note that uh, our ordinance allows them to park the emergency vehicles on the street at night because we want the high visibility mm -hmm. Officers who use the vehicles for their for their for personal use to go to and from the store, or do whatever they have to do during the day, just gives us another set of eyes and ears on the street. And on numerous occasions over the course of a year, uh, off-duty officers have made arrests, mm -hmm. observed situations where an on-duty officer can assist. Mm -hmm. They've assisted motorists. Uh, uh, several issues that that usually a, a full-time officer on the street would see, mm -hmm. and in other communities would not normally be observed because they don't have the take home mm -hmm. vehicle program and uh, the officers by parking the cars on the street as well there's a higher visibility for motorists when they come through a neighborhood they see a car they have a tendency to slow down they're a little more observant mm -hmm. so the the philosophy of the take home program has worked very well wow so we're <coughs> actually really covered more than just the full-time officers oh, most definitely we got a lot more coverage going there too wow that's true well, we feel a little safer because of that. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of nice of that. A um, few other programs you've got uh, in your department. If you want to highlight, I know I um, I help out with the uh, the Dare Committee in town here and uh, help out with some of those programs. And I know we've got quite an active uh, Dare program oh. in uh, Tinley. If you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing there and who uh, who's involved with that. Most certainly. Um, this past year, Tom Capos, who is our nine-year veteran Dare officer, transferred out. Uh, we have a career opportunity program which uh, which was established a couple of years ago and it was time for Tom to, to transfer out. Uh, we were lucky enough to have two officers move into the unit, Richard Damsky and Bob Shervino, who have taken over the, the reins of the DARE unit mm -hmm. and they have been very active. Uh, DARE is probably our premier highlight program throughout Tinley Park. Wow. Uh, last year, or this most recent year, we educated thir over 1,300 students mm -hmm. in three different school districts, not to include the parochial schools, mm -hmm. and uh, we have had a tremendous amount of, of success. Uh, DARE has come under scrutiny the last few years where a lot of people um, question the program. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've scrutinized the program, I, and my obligation as an administrator is to look to make sure that we're doing the right thing. DARE is an excellent program. DARE is reaching out and touching a lot of kids mm -hmm. that otherwise would not be educated in, in the area of drug resistance mm -hmm. uh, education. Uh, most importantly, that 
the way I look at it. There's no other program throughout the country that even touches what DARE touches. It, yeah. And it's All the right. best thing that we have going for us. And uh, it, it's a great opportunity for the 1,300 kids that we have. Yeah. Uh, they're very enthusiastic about it. I'm enthusiastic about it. And that mm -hmm. a lot of that also comes from, from Richard Damsky, mm -hmm. Tom Capos, Bob Shervino, mm -hmm. who have put hundreds of hours of their own time into this to make it what it is, such right. as DARE Fest. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's quite a yeah. tremendous thing. Yeah, I've seen the, uh, that uh, the enthusiasm come out too. It's just tremendous what they give to that. And I, I always say, why not? You know, even if it, there might be questionable whether it does some good or not, how can it do any harm? And exactly. why not teach these kids some of these things? And, and who knows, you might have a few that might say, hey, I, you know, I heard that in the D.A.R.E. program. Maybe I should stay away from this kind of stuff. So if you save a couple kids here and there, it might be still a good deal. The, the fundamentals of the program are exactly what they are, fundamentals for, <coughs> for grow, growing into your, mm -hmm. your teen years and, and later life. And there are a lot of lessons that are learned in D.A.R.E. that people take into their adult life that they remember, whether they want to admit it or not, and it's a very positive tool. Right. And what we've worked hard at is just recently in the last three years is we came up with the RIDE program. Mm -hmm. uh, the RIDE program, which means reinforcement in drug education, we did a spin-off of DARE, and what we did is we approached seventh and eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And it's been particularly successful in District 140, where one day is dedicated to the seventh and eighth graders, we bring in speakers, special guests, we do special performances, and we reinforce the concepts that were that you were taught in fifth and sixth grade. See. And uh, we've copyrighted that program. Mm. That program was very much the work of Tom Capos and Debbie Schmidt. Wow. Uh, Tom did a great job on it, and uh, he deserves a lot of credit for it. And now it's been widely accepted in District 140. Mm. District 146 will be uh, implementing it soon, mm -hmm. and we hope to get it out to some of the other schools that where we can apply it. This is kind of unique to Tilly. Is this something <coughs> that kind of under Tilly Park? Yes, sir. Oh, we are really? one of only two. Uh, towns in the state of Illinois that has anything like it. Wow. <clears throat> We've been recognized through a, a grant recently mm -hmm. uh, that we are one of only two towns in the state that does any type of reinforcement education, mm -hmm. and uh, we're very proud of it. Wow. Very proud of it. That's fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of credit should go to those people that have done a lot of that yes. work on that. Yeah, speaking of all those <clears throat> kinds of things, all these different programs you've got, uh, I understand uh, Tinley Park Police Department is going through a process of getting to be. Uh, Accredited for a, uh, a much higher position now. What what kind of uh, what is that uh, going through? I saw that in the paper not yeah. too long ago. The accreditation process is a national accreditation process that basically we strive to do the, the everything that we do falls within certain acceptable limitations. Mm -hmm. There are nationally and internationally accepted standards of how to how to run a police department, how a police department should operate, how the officers conduct themselves on the street. Uh, whether it's search and seizure, arrests, uh, any number of things, our facility, uh, how we train, what we train, different protocols. Uh, after three years of hard work by Officer Tony Balsanto, who was our accreditation manager, uh, we recently underwent uh, scrutiny by three assessors just two weekends ago mm -hmm. in a three-day process. They totally dissected our police department from, mm -hmm. from the facility through every file, over 440 files and policies that we have. And uh, we appear that we've done very, very well, <clears throat> and we can. It, we probably expect to be accredited in July in Detroit at the wow. national conference. And how, what kind of percentage of departments are accredited? Right the now, there's probably seven to nine percent throughout the country That's that are it, accredited. Right? Wow. And so we're very proud uh, of the hard work. Everybody pitched in. We got the job done. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about the accreditation process, we found out that we were already doing a lot of things the correct way and mm -hmm. doing them well. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had to fine tune a few things and, and implement a couple of new situations, but mm -hmm. other than that, we did very well. Uh, does that <coughs> mean, will that mean anything for the, the program, the department in the future in particular? Or <coughs> well, we, we have to be reaccredited. Knowing that you've got a good program. <coughs> Historically, the historical uh, data has shown from the insurance companies that accredited agencies ex, uh, experience about 25 to 30 percent fewer lawsuits mm -hmm. or litigation regarding anything that they might do on the street, whether it's mm -hmm. use of force, false arrest, mm -hmm. search and seizure, whatever. Wow. Uh, it's also shown that there, that there is a substantial decrease in settlement and costs related to that litigation mm -hmm. to, to departments uh, who are accredited and uh, also, it does sometimes reflect a decrease in the uh, premiums that the, that the villages have to pay for liability insurance wow. and things like that. So, so we're hoping it all comes together. Yeah, that's tremendous. <coughs> I hope we can uh, do all that. 
speaking of that kind of thing, how are we doing as far as uh, the crime rates and things going on in Tinley? How safe a community are we uh, in, the, in the recent yeah. past? Tinley Park is, is a town of almost 55,000 people, if not more at this point. We are blessed with a low crime rate for the number of people that we have. We have a very low crime rate for uh, the, the demographics of the community as far as traffic, businesses, commercial, industrial, retail. Uh, we have no violent crime to speak of compared to other communities, and uh, we do very well in that area. Our crime rate decreased uh, uh, last year about 13 percent, which we were very happy with. Um, it, and that comes from a concerted effort from all the people in the police department to, to address certain areas, hot spots in town, and uh, try to control that or, or um, uh, deter it. <clears throat> what are some of the main things uh, that are going on? What are the, what are the, part of the hot spots <clears throat> that you have to deal with? Surprisingly, the, the two most uh, uh, annoying and probably the most popular crimes in town are theft and criminal damage to property. Uh, we experience a tremendous amount of, of, I guess you could call it petty theft, but th there are thefts of substantial items, you know, the lawn furniture, you know, uh, lawn ornaments, some vehicle thefts. We had about 65 vehicle thefts last year, which is mm -hmm. relatively, very relatively small compared to other uh, really? communities. Okay. Uh, but we spend a lot of time following up on on crime patterns of damage to property and theft patterns where people leave their car open or they leave a car unlocked and somebody reaches in and can grab the stereo, the radar detector, the CD player, a stack of CDs, a purse, wow. you know, and, and people, um, we've just asked people to kind of tighten their belts and be careful <laughs> and, and be a little more vigilant on how they, they, they secure their property. So some things are more preventable, <coughs> they are. Most definitely, <laughs> most definitely. Extent, uh, and all that stuff. But uh, it's good to hear that we're, it's not a huge uh, problem, but enough to be aggravating. Certainly, and enough to keep us busy yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it keeps us moving and, mm -hmm. and uh, trying to deter other things as well. It's got to be tough to follow up with some of this, isn't it? It's <coughs> kind of tough to end these, some of these petty thefts and, and damage to property. Uh, is, that, is that tough to kind of follow up and find out who did all that kind of stuff? Or uh? It's very difficult in crimes of opportunity because, yeah. you know, the old saying, you know, you keep an honest man honest by locking a door or closing a window. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times when someone who would not ordinarily do something, commit a crime, yeah. uh, might reach in a car and grab a CD that they see as vulnerable or grab pair of sunglasses or a handful of change off the center console, you know, kids walking by 12, 13, 14 years old, or it could be a young adult that could be doing it. Wow. So, uh, you know, we, you know, we know that, we look for patterns, but sometimes it's the random acts that, that, mm -hmm. that keep us busy. Wow. <coughs> Speaking of this, we got the negative stuff. Let's take some positive stuff you guys are doing, too. Uh, you got a couple of real neat <coughs> programs that the, the officers were. I know there's, there's one uh, pro project they've come up with themselves, the Tinley Wish program that the uh, officers themselves have come up with. Uh, yes. What, what's that all about? Approximately five years ago, uh, several of our officers and part-time officers took part in, in Make-A-Wish uh, telethon downtown. Mm -hmm. When they came back, they, they came up with the idea that they wanted to do something that was Tinley specific. And the officer at that part time, part time officer Rich Kozik and officer Dennis Mahoney approached me and said, We like to start our own Tinley Wish program. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, what they do is people have donated money, they've donated material, equipment, and we identify anywhere from three to five or six families during the course of the Christmas season who are needy or are having financial problems due to illness. Mm -hmm. And what we do is uh, with the money that they collect and different things like computers and bicycles that are donated, mm -hmm. we make sure that we distribute them uh, to, the, to the families we identify as needy and make sure that they have a, a, a family Christmas. Wow. And everybody from Public Works to ESDA to fire to police all take part in, uh, in, a, in a great big parade. It's an elaborate little, uh, <laughs> it see, I've seen uh, pictures of that. Uh, you guys really you make a whole, like I said, parade to these people's houses mm -hmm. and do all kinds of things with them and present them with everything. Yeah, and, and, and it's really is rewarding to see the yeah. see the people, how, how grateful they are for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. We've raised, uh, I shouldn't say we, they have raised uh, over $90,000 in five mm -hmm. years and distributed to the needy wow. people. They've run, uh, they, have met, they have gotten uh, recognition from the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police, the South Suburban Association of mm -hmm. Chiefs of Police for the work that they've been, mm -hmm. they've been doing over the years and they plan to continue it. That's tremendous. Uh, yeah, yeah we encourage Very proud that. of it. Yeah, you should be. And you got some seniors involved with police work too. How, how are you? Getting, Almost. How are you getting them involved? <laughs> well, the seniors belong to a group called uh, uh, Seniors 
and law enforcement together. Mm -hmm. And basically, they after we, we have meetings, we talk about crime prevention, but they get involved in a lot of volunteer stuff, phone calling for us, doing, doing surveys to what I call customer survey when we have someone who's dealt with the police where we've had to take a report, some people we've even arrested. We, we mm -hmm. pick them randomly out of our stack of files, call them and ask them how the service was, how were they treated, mm -hmm. was the officer professional, was he polite, did he handle the, did he handle the, the case competently, mm -hmm. what did you like, what didn't you like. When we get a negative response, we follow it up with a phone call, we talk to them, see what we can do better, mm -hmm. and then we make a point of it to make sure the officer is aware of it, that if it's a, something the officer did mm -hmm. that he could do better, we, we apprise them of it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we let the department know what the expectations of the people are. How long has that been going? Do you know? <clears throat> uh, that's been going for several, probably seven or eight years. Wow. Yeah. All right. Pretty good. How many people have you got, seniors you've got involved with that? Oh, uh, I would say that we probably have 30 <clears throat> new members a year. Holy and, and, cow. We have, and we have the meetings. That's a we, lot. <coughs> More than yeah. I thought. <laughs> and uh, right. they, they get involved in the senior academy. We have a graduation mm -hmm. process also mm -hmm. uh, where we have like a, a senior training academy and let them know what police work is all about. Okay. <coughs> wow. And it's tell me one of the few that has a canine unit attached to it, too. How, how prevalent is that in, in the south suburbs? Uh, most departments have a canine unit. Really? Some, oh, okay. some have as many as two or three, depending oh, on wow. the size and their activities. Okay. Uh, we have Darren Persia and Enzo. Uh, officer Darren Persia does an excellent job. Our mm -hmm. previous canine officer, Rick Bruno, who's now a sergeant, mm -hmm. uh, had Bach, and uh, he's oh, laid, yeah, he laid yeah. the groundwork in, in the... Uh, the uh, standard to be met by our canine unit, mm. and uh, Darren has kept quite busy along with Bach, mm. does an excellent job, and uh, mm. uh, we use him for a lot of public relations. We can use him mm. for tracking if we're looking for a lost person mm -hmm. or a wanted subject or someone who ran from the scene of a crime, mm. uh, but we use the dog for several different things. Drug sniffing, if we get a car, mm -hmm. he can sniff drugs out of a car or a location. Do you use it pretty regularly? Does a dog get used? Uh, yes, he, he is trained and used regularly. If uh, nothing else, if nothing happens within the department within a few weeks, they will they will interact together the other canine officers within mm. the with other within other communities. Mm. They'll have an interactive training program, mm -hmm. uh, search lockers at some of the local high schools and surprise locker searches. Oh really? And oh, uh, it works out very well. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the dogs. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> oh my God. Um, a couple other things. I know you've got uh, a fingerprints, new fingerprint system uh, <coughs> that you're using now. Is that something uh, that uh, you're the automated uh, fingerprint identification system? What is yeah. that? I've heard we of call that APHIS, and what used to be what we call the ink and roll system, where yeah. you, uh, you had to take the individual, individual, and individual fingers and roll them uh, with ink onto a card, mm -hmm. send, send them to Joliet to be classified. Mm -hmm. Took sometimes anywhere from three to seven weeks mm -hmm. to find out if someone was who they said they were. Mm. Now with the new computerized system, which goes through Chicago and Cook County, mm. uh, we can have, we've had fingerprints back as, as soon as 30 minutes. Oh, geez. <clears throat> right. And, uh, and how do they take those now? What do they Now use? what they do is they do it on a, on a glass prism on a computer. Oh. The, the computer, the glass computer, prism comes huh? up on the screen, and if uh -huh. it's an acceptable fingerprint, we can capture it. When we get all 10 fingerprints, mm -hmm. it's automatically transmitted through the city of Chicago and to the state of Illinois mm -hmm. through their database system to search to see if there's uh, either any the person is wanted mm -hmm. <coughs> and also who the person, who he actually is. Hmm. <coughs> wow. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It really Modern is. Modern technology is helping with that stuff now, right. too. And Chicago has just incorporated allowing us to go into their crime database with their arrest photos, mm. arrest reports, associated names, mm -hmm. where when it goes through, it automatically will go through Chicago's system mm -hmm. and pick up all related information regarding the individual that was just fingerprinted as well. Mm. So things have changed in the last, even the last <laughs> 10 years. Wow. Tremendously. Well, that's, that's tremendous. <coughs> um, another thing I've, I've uh, thought about, too, I'm wondering about, too, uh, the automatic defibrillator. We've been hearing those about, I know we fly sometimes, that that's a new thing in the aircraft nowadays. Yes. And in some of the public places. Uh, do we have those in Tinley? Yes, we do. Every officer that hits the street has an AED with him. Wow. Uh, every public building. And what, uh, maybe I should <coughs> tell you, what, what is that for? What do they do that? What do that they is for, for? Uh, a person who may suffer a heart attack, mm -hmm. where their heart is in fibrillation. It's out of rhythm. Mm -hmm. The defibrillator uh, can can bring the heartbeat heartbeat back to a normal rhythm. Mm -hmm. Many people die uh, before they get to the hospital as a result of heart attack, mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, defibrillator can can really save them. We've had one save out at the golf course, mm -hmm. out at a wedding, uh, about a year and a half ago. Wow. We had uh, a gentleman went down. He was uh, what we would call a straight line, mm -hmm. no heartbeat, no breathing. Uh, officers were about three blocks away when the call came in. Mm -hmm. They were able to uh, defib him, and uh, he uh, he came to an award ceremony last summer oh, at, at a golf outing, 
and made a pre life saving presentation to the officers who saved his life. Oh, yeah. And, and he's out doing everything that he normally does. Oh. So we're very happy to have something like that. That machine board. was worth it. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> it's worth, most the, definitely. Uh, worth the expense. Wow. Yeah. We're getting towards the end of the program. I was just gonna, we haven't talked about you a whole lot. Uh, where do you come from? What's, what's been your background in law enforcement and how well, long have you been doing this kind of business? I've been in the business now 31 years. Wow. Uh, I was originally born in Chicago, south side of Chicago, moved to a small town called Dalton and then to mm -hmm. Riverdale when I was about nine years old. I grew up in Riverdale oh. where I got on the, the job there on the police department uh, in 1972. Mm -hmm. I was a career law enforcement in Riverdale until uh, 1995 when uh, uh, you know I was chief there for the last six years of my career and then I had oh. the opportunity to come here mm -hmm. uh, with the passing of Chief Wade who was mm -hmm. a personal friend of mine. Mm -hmm. The opportunity arose for me uh, to apply for the position and I was accepted okay. uh, and uh, had a very, very happy career. What, what, what would you point to the last, and your t tenure here has been some of the highlights of things that you've <clears throat> kind of brought to Tinley or things that you've seen uh, grow in Tinley since, since you've been chief? Well, you know, you'd like to think that you're doing a lot of things right, uh, but I inherited a very good police department, and I have to say that uh, even though I feel that I've done, brought some things to Tinley, I've learned a lot from Tinley. I've learned a lot from, from the elected officials and from the staff. Uh, what, what I came from was a landlocked town with no development, mm -hmm. and we just had to do what they call reactive law enforcement. The participation in the planning of the future of the town mm -hmm. uh, has been my highlight. It really has been a learning process and an educational process, mm -hmm. which, uh, which really keeps me excited every day. I learn something new every day when I go to work and I deal with the village manager or his mm -hmm. planning staff or my commanders here. Mm -hmm. We learn. We learn from each other and uh, just try to bring the best we can to, to Tinley. It sounds like it's a pretty, pretty good uh, corroboration and uh, cooperation among all departments and uh, the village and everything like that in town here. Tremendous. Okay. Tremendous amount of cooperation, and uh, everybody loves their job, mm -hmm. uh, literally. Uh, we get along well within the departments, and uh, uh, I couldn't be happier here and uh, look forward to going to work every morning. And I still enjoy coming to work. That's good to hear. Yes, it is. <laughs> but Chief O'Connell, it's been great uh, having you. I think you've highlighted uh, a lot of areas and really uh, impressed all the things that are going on in Tinley Park Police Thank Department. You, and uh, keep up the good work. You guys are doing a tremendous job. And uh, you know, be thankful we've got uh, excellent officers uh, on the job in Tinley <coughs> Park and, uh, and the Chief of Police is really keeping on top of everything. So uh, welcome again uh, to Discover Tinley. My name is Ron Centenni, and we'll see you next month uh, with another highlight of Tinley Park. Thank <laughs> you.